Cloning isn't easy. Scientists know this, but they're not on the verge of bringing woolly mammoths back. In a couple of years, we could see them roaming the northernmost regions of the planet. But what about all of the problems in doing so? Well, we're now going to tell you all about them. I know what you're thinking. How can we clone woolly mammoths that have been extinct for about 100,000 years when we can't even clone humans who are still alive and well? Well, first of all, they haven't been extinct for 100,000 years. Generally speaking, the last woolly mammoths went extinct about 12,000 years ago in Siberia. But even this isn't completely true. According to recent studies, they found out that on Wrangell Island in Siberia, the last woolly mammoths died about 4,000 years ago. From a medical study conducted on extinct moa birds in New Zealand, we know that DNA has a half-life of 521 years. So every 1,000 years, 75% of the genetic information is lost. They have extracted DNA from the leg bones of the birds to find out that the molecule of life actually has an expiration date. But there have been cases where DNA has been extracted from animals that are older than 1,000 years, and this is the key to cloning woolly mammoths. But the Wrangell Island woolly mammoths had horrible DNA. Their sense of smell has been drastically diminished, they were ridden with diseases, and they were prone to diabetes. Frankly, it would be extremely difficult to clone the mammoths from DNA alone. Even if we were somehow able to reconstruct the DNA of extinct animals on the planet, we still couldn't bring the dinosaurs back to life. Why is that? For the same reason we cannot clone humans. You see, it's not just ethics that's stopping us from making human clones, it's dangerous. You can't just take the DNA of a human, put it in a test tube, blast it with some high-tech laser, and boom, in 9 months you have a living, breathing human baby. It's much more complicated than that. To better explain how cloning would need to work, we'll look at Dolly, the first clone animal that lived from 1996 until 2003. To successfully do this, the scientists extracted a strand of DNA from a Scottish black-faced sheep. And then they replaced the DNA with the DNA of a mammary stem cell from a fin dorset sheep. Then all it took was some electric shock to fuse the cell and get it to start replicating. After this was successfully done, they placed the cells in the uterus of another sheep and that's how we have Dolly. Seems simple enough, right? Well, not really. You see, we only hear about the one successful sheep that was cloned using the process. What we almost never hear about are the 276 times this experiment failed and the 276 baby sheep that never lived. Dolly was the 277th, but before her, some of the sheep died in the embryonic stages, others were met with miscarriages, and the majority of those who were born were born with severe physical defects. Imagine trying to do this with humans, where around 300 surrogate mothers would be implanted with a human embryo and have many of them go through tragic miscarriages to come to one successfully cloned human. That's as close to impossible as you can get. For the same reason, even if we sometimes were able to reconstruct DNA from dinosaurs, we would still need a mother that would carry the embryo. And that's where the problems arise. Which animal could possibly create a dinosaur egg? We cannot replicate the exact environment the dinosaur egg would need in order to hatch. So what does this mean for woolly mammoths? Nothing. This doesn't really apply to these hairy elephants from the north. For example, Thomas Lindahl from the Imperial Cancer Research found in South Sims, England, says that the oldest DNA we've been able to recover was from the mitochondria of woolly mammoths that were present in the Siberian permafrost regions. Now, the DNA doesn't come to us from the nucleus of the cell, but from the mitochondria, these sequences were more than sufficient to confirm one large evolutionary theory. The woolly mammoth is closely related to the elephant. So, two major parts of the mammoth cloning procedure have been solved. First, we found the DNA. Second, we found mothers that could carry the embryos. So here's what the scientists plan on doing next. A startup named Colossal came out in September of 2021, saying that they have secured $15 million in funding to bring thousands upon thousands of the mammoths back. Even though bringing the woolly mammoth back to life was just a theory a couple of years ago, nowadays it's more than possible thanks to a technology called CRISPR. Without boring you with too many details about Cas9 proteins, guide RNA, and inserting program DNA after cutting the double strands of DNA, we're just going to tell you that CRISPR is a copy-paste tool for DNA. You can take a genetic code, copy it, and paste it into the DNA of another animal. This is the simplest explanation we could give you. Now, using this technology, the scientists are planning to take the genetic code from the woolly mammoths and implant it in the DNA of an elephant. Geneticist George Church from Harvard and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology says that this is a major milestone. Being able to introduce cold-resistant elephants to the North Pole could be a game-changer. They'll tweak some of the genes so they could produce denser hair and a layer of skin that's fattier than the one found on today's elephants. 
They say that this could possibly be within the next few years and about 10 years at the latest. So by 2031, we should be expecting to have a fully cloned mammoth elephant hybrid. The reason they want to do this is because they would help reduce the moss and increase the grassland areas in the north. If they're able to bring the woolly mammoth back to life, what's stopping them from bringing back other animals that went extinct a couple of thousands of years ago? For example, take the real-life Siberian unicorn. Now it didn't have wings and it didn't produce rainbows, but they were real. They're the long-lost relatives of the rhinos and they roam the grasslands of Eurasia. If the scientists are right, meaning this animal went extinct between 100,000 and 39,000 years ago, that would mean they lived together with humans. The only reason they went extinct is because they were picky eaters. If scientists could replicate the DNA from the woolly mammoth, then it's more than possible to replicate the DNA of this ancient rhino. Recently, scientists have discovered a well-preserved body of a Siberian unicorn in the permafrost. Upon closer inspection, they realized that all of the internal organs of the animal were intact, so the possibility is strong that they will bring it back to life using the same technique. Imagine if you could see Diego from Ice Age come back to life. And no, we don't mean in the animated movie. These saber-toothed cats are believed to have roamed the Earth until the Quaternary Extinction. That means the last saber-toothed tiger died about 10,000 years ago. And in recent years, scientists discovered a well-preserved bone from one of these cats. The bone was said to be 50,000 years old, but it was in such good condition that they were able to extract some of the fragmented DNA from the bone. They found out that the cat had really good eyesight and probably hunted during the day. If the DNA is preserved well enough, we could use the modern-day tigers as surrogates for the saber-toothed tigers. This means that we could be on our way to restoring yet another popular animal species. If there's a chance that we will bring back any animal back to life, it's got to be the dodo bird. They went extinct in 1662 and were endemic to the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. The dodo was a rather large bird that had a height of 3.3 feet. They weighed between 23 and 39 pounds, and they're some of the species that have gone extinct in relatively recent history. Again, if the CRISPR technology is successful, then the 12 nearly complete skeletons of the dodo bird could be used for DNA extraction and we would be more than able to clone these birds. This is the Tasmanian wolf, which is a type of marsupial that was native to the islands of Tasmania and New Guinea. They were between 40 and 50 inches long and had an additional 20 to 26 inches for their tails, which is about 30% of the entire length. They were also called the Tasmanian tigers because of their striped lower backs. However, this animal went extinct in 1936 due to overhunting. Because of that, the DNA of the Tasmanian wolf is well preserved and the CRISPR technology could be used to bring this mammal back to life. Of course, we would need a surrogate wolf female to carry the embryos, but if it works, this could mean the end of the extinction of animals. This is Koala with quality content. See you soon. YouTube thinks that you should watch this video next.